What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna bring you a quick little guide on how to do or how to use the Infernal Hordes game mode, which is the seasonal theme for Diablo 4 Season 5. Now, before we get into how to kind of operate it, first let's get into how to actually access the Infernal Horde game mode itself. So you can access the mode in World Tier 3 and 4, okay? Um, you need to, what you need to do though, is you need to come over here and you need to, type to uh, talk to Isla and you need to do the mother's gifts. I am almost done to get my final one, which is fantastic. Oh wait, did I, they actually give me credit for this? Uh, I'll grab it in a second. But you're going to be completing the mother's gifts by getting XP from down here in the corner, which is killing elites, champions, hellborns, and bosses. I know my camera covers it up, but... That's what you're going to uh, kill in order to progress this. Now, there is a quest line that you guys need to do. Once you finish the quest line, it'll bring you back to Islet or Ist, Istel. And you, then she'll drop you an infernal, excuse me, an infernal compass. Okay, these infernal compasses are what you're going to use to have access to the uh, infernal horde game mode. Okay, these infernal co horde compasses, they have... Eight different tiers okay so when you get them in world tiers three it should be uh, a tier one and a tier two and when you get your very first one into world tier four it will be a tier two infernal horde compass now each tier has a different level of monster difficulty okay so tier two is level 75 monsters Tier 3 is level 100 monsters, and then every tier going up thereafter increases by 20. So Tier 4 is 120, Tier 5 is 140, Tier 6 is 180 or 160, Tier 7 is 180, and then Tier 8 is level 200 monsters. So it gets progressively harder and harder and harder. Now, once you're able to actually get an Infernal Compass... Then you'll you'll notice that on these compasses, it has some some compass affixes. Okay, so it'll tell you the wave cap, which on uh, tier one and two it's only six. When you um, or excuse me, um, on tiers one and two it's five. When you go to three and four it's six, and then it's seven, and then it goes to eight. Okay, now but when you go to world tier or uh, tier three and higher. You will get the what you see there in gold, which is the bonus chest with a guaranteed greater affix drops at 60 Aether. So on a tier one and two, you do not have access to the greater affix chest reward, but every tier after you have access to it. So then there's more legendary items and more crafting materials. The pretty much the encompasses are the same either way because we're going to be adding affixes as we go through the game mode itself. Okay. Now, second thing before we go in and talk about this, the Infernal Horde uh, compasses can be found by doing dun Nightmare Dungeons. Uh, that is literally the best way. I thought that last night when we were running them, I got a plethora here of these. You find these very, very easy. The drop rates are perfectly fine. We were running like 60s, 70s, 80s Nightmare Dungeons, and you get plenty of these, so there's no, worry there, no worries there. However, you can come to the occultists and craft them the infernal hordes you can craft them so just for just for clarity I'll, I'll craft a tier one and a tier two and then you have a tier three here so you guys can see the difference so wave cap is six there's like nothing else you get no additional bonuses it's in world tier three okay world tier or tier two goes to world tier four and you can see we have more items and then same thing here at tier three is when you can get the bonus chest right and then we go to to tier four now you can craft these here but in order to craft these you need to finish the story quest line which i have a whole nother video about if you guys are interested on in how to do that but you can come here and craft these it costs sigils plus forgotten souls sigil powder and forgotten souls super easy no big deal there uh now when it comes to these i think it's cool that you can craft them i think that's fantastic okay it's a very very cool thing but then there's upgrading so we can take the Abyssal Scrolls here, and you get these from opening your rewards chest at the end of the Infernal Horde game mode, and it's it's very cool. You get so many of these, it's kind of silly how many you actually get, but this is to upgrade Infernal Compass to the next tier. So let's say I had a bunch of these level ones. I can just right-click on the Abyssal Scroll, left-click, and now it's a tier two, tier three, tier four, and you see it goes up to wave cap seven, which this one's a wave cap six. And then you can keep going to uh, 
five, etc. So it shows that the, the amount of revives and it shows the actual monster level, which is really cool. So these are 120s. I'm going to actually, for the purposes of the video, I'll just stay at, at, at tier four just so you guys can see it. But yeah, you get plenty of these. So if you have a bunch of old ones, you could just upgrade them. No big deal. <clears throat> and again, you can come in here and you can just salvage these things as well. It's not a big deal whatsoever. And you get back sigil powder. You lose the forgotten souls that it took to actually craft these. So keep that in mind. But it's it's very few and you find so many souls. So it's not a big deal at all. So that's how you gain access to the Infernal Horde game mode. And then how you can get Infernal Horde compasses and how to craft them. So once you have your Infernal Horde compass, all we're going to do is right click this. This is going to act just like a Nightmare Dungeon. Activate the Onslaught. Boom. It's going to bring it to you here in the Infernal Hordes. We're going to go do this dungeon. Um, and I'm just going to take you through it because I'm going to have a whole nother video on the best, like, affixes to add in between each wave. So that way you guys can kind of have a way to maximize your Aether because I've been farming these like absolute crazy. So when you first get in here, you're just going to run up. Make sure you have everything. Make sure you have your potions popped, all that good stuff. And then we're just going to run up here to the Aether Fiend and we're going to start... We're going to start the, the dungeon. So each wave, we got six waves, and each wave is one minute long. They are one minute long, so you want to kill as many things as possible. Now, when you see these little fire things come up, you want to get over here and activate them and kill the monsters that spawn out of those. Same thing when these Aetheric masses spawn, you need to kill those immediately. Kill those as fast as possible. Because they're considered events, and the more events that you can do, the more monsters that you can spawn. Therefore, the more Aether that you can get. Soul Spires, you want to be inside the red circle, and you want to kill monsters as you are inside of it to trigger it, so that way you finish it. Aether, remember, make sure you guys have your, your pet with you so they pick up all the additional stuff. Pop these. Boom. Easy peasy. And then at the end, you just want to kill the rest of the monsters. When the timer goes away, that's when the monsters will stop spawning or additional monsters. And then we're at the end of the round. So in between each wave that is one minute long, you have unlimited time here. So you don't advance the game mode until you go to the, until you select one of these, um, like affixes to be added on here. You can also press tab and see the additional affixes that you've put on here in each round. So if you need to like change a skill, pop a new potion, equip a new item, etc., then you can do that. Now, at the end of each round, you get a choice for three of these different um, affixes that you can add. There's always gonna be a negative plus a positive in some way. So for example, masses that you saw me do, it's unavoidable damage, wave start, it spawns them. Exalted, normal monsters deal increased damage, but killing them spawns Aether events 50% faster. And then Soul Spires, that red circle drains health, but I get plus two Aether. So I'm gonna break down a whole nother video on the best ones to pick, but essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one of these. I'm gonna pick this because I want more Aether. And now we're gonna start wave two. So you see it's one minute long. And again, We're just gonna kill all the monsters. It's endless wave. We're gonna go do Soul Spire. It takes times two the monsters to defeat, but boom, now I got times two Aether, which is great. We'll teleport over, save Soul Spire again. I'll take all that juicy Aether, thank you. Easy. Bouncy Fireball is just insane, guys. I'm going to take you through a full run. Or I might just skip to the end. Kill the mass. Kill the mass. God, Bouncy Fireball is so good for this. Boom. Finished it, grab all of our stuff, spawns three more again. I like to just pick ones that give me more Aether, but I'm gonna break down the whole thing 
in another video. So we're just gonna select, this is wave three. Oh yeah, one thing I should note is, is that as you go through the waves, they progressively get harder and harder and harder. It's more and more mobs as these modifiers continue to stack up. However, I will say that I didn't make the video yet, but this is an incredibly strong way to get in a, an enormous amount of XP, especially if you got a good group and a good build. Now, we're about to go into wave six, and I want to do a sh just show something very important here, just so you guys can see this in the video. Now, you notice that each of these uh, affixes, they're different tiers. You can see white is the basic tiers. Yellow is a little bit better of a tier. And then you got legendary like the skulking devil or stalking devil, which can give you a crap ton of ether. So for this one, an infernal demon has my scent slay it to gain 25 aether, which is a lot. So you can see that a lot of these affixes come in and some are just better than others and some are worse, right? So we come over here, we can see all of our axes affixes that we added so our boons and banes these are technically called boons and banes i'm sorry i was trying to remember what it was so our boons is what's the benefit to us so at the end of each wave we spawn more aether soul spires grant more soul spires give me times two and aether lords give me and then here's the negatives for it right lord spawn soul spires gives times two kills to, to complete they drain health and then hellfire rains upon us so I'm gonna take this one and we're gonna go into the final wave and then we gotta defeat the boss the butchers here Oh, don't die. Oh, God, the butcher is so strong. The butcher is so strong. The burning butcher. He spawned. Okay. Once you have completed all six waves and you have survived, now it's time to go fight the council. Okay. So now we're going to come up here to the council gate. We're going to unlock this. And now we get to do our boss fight. The boss fight is always going to have three different bosses and they're all going to vary. They're all going to have different affixes. So again, here, just like any boss, you can get ready to queue up, make sure your cooldowns are all set, etc., And then we're going to go in and fight the boss. We get three different ones that spawn and you're just going to blast these guys like crazy. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill this guy. Oh yeah. You're dead. The last guy. Boom. Now, once you've defeated all the bosses, and it can be harder at the lower levels, right? They're going to drop some final aether that you need and Mother's Gift stuff. And now we are at the end where we have our total aether spent, and then we have all of our different chests that you can redeem. Now, I am going to have a gold guide for this because the gold, this is literally the best way to get gold. Like, I have 30 million. Like, this is the best way. But you can see the different spoils of equipment, the spoils of, of greater equipment, which is the guaranteed greater affix, materials, and then gold. So I'm going to go over each one. Let's break down the, the greater uh, equipment one. So this one drops this many items, and I get a guaranteed greater affix, and it can spawn more than one. This is also going to be a random greater affix, meaning you can either get one, two, or three at random, but you are guaranteed at least one greater affix. However, the only negative to this is that you can only open the chest once, which is just fine. All these chests, the, the, the materials and equipment, you can open as many times as you have Aether left. And then the gold exchange all of your other Aether for just gold, okay? It's a very good gold amount. Like exchanging about 100 gold gives you somewhere between 6 to 8 million gold, which is insane. I'll have to make a whole gold chart about that in another video. But um, yeah, so... Materials, this is really cool. You open this, you're getting a bunch of gems. You're gonna get Obdesite, which is insane. So I have technically not unlocked the pit yet. I've completed the Nightmare Dungeon Sigil to do it, but I have not ran one, and I already have 240 Obdesite because, and 10 Ingolith, because I've opened the materials cache. So it's kind of cool to get some materials. It's not the best thing, but if you haven't accessed the pit yet and you want to just run Infernal Hordes, you can eventually rack up enough of the Obdusite to put your gear to level four, which is a really cool thing. Now with equipment, it's 20. All these can still drop the Abyssal Scrolls and then you get gear, right? That you get from opening this. So you can get greater affix gear from here. You can get the legendary or unique items from the uh, equipment as well as the greater affix box. So if we open this again, 
So we didn't get any of the, the uniques, but that's where you get them from, especially all the brand new ones this season. And then last but not least, I have 90 gold or 90 Aether left. I'm at 27 and a half million. So I'm gonna exchange just to show you uh, for the video how much gold you can actually get. So I was at 27 and a half and I exchanged 90. So I gained what? Three and four. So I gave gained seven million gold from 90 Aether. And it still drops in a, an abyssal scroll. Literally the best way to get gold in this game. Tree of Whispers is non-existent. So after that, you do have a stash here, guys, if you need to go through and just drop equipment, etc. But that is it for the Infernal Hordes game mode. I really hope that this video helped you guys out, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the mode. Let me know if you guys have any questions about stuff. I will have another video, like I said, about how uh, which uh, boons and banes to take to give you the best experience going through this to help you get to maximize your Aether, etc. So comment down below. Again, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.